写字。How come the thing is that way though? No? Well, hold on. Okay. Uh, well, oh, you know what? I might need to take off the. Oh, the lock. Yeah. I'm actually on. I am actually live, but I'm going to check my YouTube studio. Cool. Maybe move it a little bit closer to the other camera. Cool, I'm just gonna do one more thing. Let's find other buttons. Awesome. 
We're on. We're on, I think. Are you on on yours? I didn't go live yet. Oh. Live. We are live. Very live. Yeah. All right. We're still on topic. This week is guard passing. Do it, do it without the gi. So I would like to maybe start off similar to what we did the other day where we were uh, opening the guard. And it's a little tougher in, in no gi, but um, I would like to just modify the technique that we went, went over and then, then we can start adding from there. Yep. All right, so let's... Um, So here I don't have any lapels to grab, okay? And, but I still like to control one of the hands. So I'm gonna look to grab both of, uh, both of my hands on one of his wrists, okay? This way as I stand up, he won't be able to grab my ankles with both of his hands. So I hold on, I'm gonna put my weight on him, and then I'm gonna either stand one leg at the other, on the other or I can just hop up right over here. And as you see, I still have the wrist. If I, if I hold on to it, I'm going to stand as tall as I can, put my thumb inside, push down, and then step back. And then we can go into similar passes. So I'm here. Maybe well, um, first I got to get my posture back. If um, he is breaking me down like this, I always circle my hands to the inside like this and get his hands off my head. Or I move my own head out of the way, and then I'm going to posture. Then I look to hand fight, and I grab the wrist, back straight, head up. Then I stand up nice and tall, knees pinch, toes in, back straight. And then I'm gonna push down on his knee to open up the guard, forcing that half guard pressure, chest to chest, and I get up. So I come here, and then I go to stand. Now sometimes when I'm standing, I may, let, I may lose the wrist and he starts grabbing my ankles. So here is where you're gonna have to work on your balance a little bit. So what I like to do is I lean and I kick one leg free. And then I can go back to, to pushing. Let's look at that one. So maybe I came here. If I can't grab the wrist, if he's always fighting, you can, now you can do one of these too. You can put the hands in the armpits right here. Stand up, but then stand as tall as you can. If he grabs, I'm gonna lean, kick the leg brace. So, my foot is gonna go to the inside space here to free my leg. Because if I, if I kick this way, he can hold on. But if I move this way, I start loosening it. And then I pull it back, open, either pass from the outside, or if I was still, with good pressure here, I can trap, bring this leg up, and I get to my chest to chest position. Yeah, double wrist grips really, really strong alternative for no gi if you like those with the wrist control there. And there's a couple uh, good strategies. Brian McLaughlin uh, went over kind of some strategies too if you really sh if you're struggling to get a hold of that double wrist just by you know going here generally speaking people start to are trying to hand fight to me so if he's controlling my wrist or if he's or even if he's to the inside controlling here always remember that like you can pass right like i can pass one hand over to the other to gain control then maybe make my grip on that single hand if he's controlling my wrist same deal right sometimes fighting on the hand itself isn't the best option bring your hand back across quick Right quick and then, a, and then a quick switch there so sometimes you get frustrated that's, and a lot of times I feel like that's where like people make mistakes 
in the process of starting the pass is, you know, like obviously the person's not sitting there like I was, just like, go ahead, take the pass. He's fighting me, he's fighting the inside control, he's fighting for the wrist control, he's breaking the leg posture. So we get frustrated, so then we say, you know what, I'm just gonna try to do it when I don't have the proper position. And then that's when we get swept or we get submitted, right? It's, it's this, this is the first battle, is, is can I get there? Then the second battle is can I move quick because especially no gi, I, once I make my grip, it's not as uh, hard for the other person to um, to uh, free their grip as it is in the gi, right? So like if I go here and I'm like, okay, I got it. It's not going to take very long for him to peel my one arm off and now it's one arm versus one arm and do what he needs to do, right? So once you get to that grip, it's go, okay? start Make him start defending the pass, not the grip anymore. Um, you know, so there's a couple little like strategies in terms of that because I feel like especially in no gi, I see people get really frustrated with that, make those mistakes because they haven't been able to maintain um, control of the of the wrist grips. Yeah, I agree. You have to go for it because um, because of the slipperiness, you have to um, when once you have the control of the wrist, start moving so that you know the person on bottom doesn't start getting momentum on their side. You know, everything when it comes to guard passing is about control, controlling your opponent, and um, and kind of it's it's all like checkpoints, right? Once right. you get to a certain checkpoint, then you can move on, then you get a little bit more control, get to your next checkpoint. Right, and and you know, like, like you said, it's like those each one of those checkpoints, the other person has to start defending. Um, they have to de defend the matter at hand. Right, so if I'm just ri if I'm just hand fighting, then they're gonna hand fight back, and then it's whoever moves first into the next thing. But if they get control of an inside grip, or break my posture, or get a wrist control, and then start to move into the attack, change their angle, now I have to deal with that angle change before I can even really think about defending the grip. Right, so it's the same thing for the person on top. If I don't. If I get to a control position and then I think I'm just going to sit there, well, the person now just has to worry about the wrist grip and then they go right on to, okay, can I get into attack? If I move into the passing, the actual passing strategy, then, um, then they have to start dealing with that. Did I get my knee and my knee out? Did I stand all the way up, right? Because once Yanni stands up, yes, I want to get my hand back, but my bigger issue is that he's stood all the way up, okay? And he's close to, to breaking my guard open. Are we okay? Yeah, I'm just gonna load up your um, chat so we don't have to go to your phone. Oh. Can't see um, him over there. James Meals, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, can I just go? Oh wait, can I just? And we can see the chat there, and then I'm just gonna this one make it a little skinnier. If any of you guys got questions on guard passing, put it in the chat. Yeah. Tag your friends, tag your jujitsu friends that might want to see some stuff. So in um in no gi, I think one of the uh, struggles is um, defending against butterfly hooks, it gets stickier, no gi. So um, I'm gonna go over just um, some of my, uh, the way I pummel my legs if someone does get butterfly hooks on me, especially once we get to half guard. So if I did open Andy's guard and I ended up over here and I did manage to like step over and start setting up a half guard, he may use this outside butterfly hook right over here. And I'm, even with my head and arm control like this, he can use his butterfly hook to elevate my hips and get his other knee in. And now it's easy for him to push back and now I have to almost start over. So we're going to keep this head and arm position and I always counter his butterfly hook with my butterfly hook if I didn't have this foot here already. Because now if he elevates me with the leg, I can use my knee to block his knee from coming in. Now it comes to like, how do I get rid of this hook? Okay, so nice basic way to escape it is I'm going to now shift my weight forward and I'm going to put my weight onto my head right here. Now I'm going to take my foot 
I'm going to bend it heel to my butt and I bring my butterfly hook inside. So now I'm using my butterfly hook against this shin, like a shin to shin type control. And now all I have to do is just remove his leg and I end up almost in the full mount or I can windshield wiper my legs to the side and go right to side control. So over here, let's actually turn this way so they can see what we're doing with our feet. All right, so he's using a butterfly hook. So I use my opposite butterfly hook to make sure he can't lift. Now when he tries to lift me up, I use my leg to block it. Now I'm gonna shift my way forward because if I sit back, it's very difficult to get my foot inside of his foot. Gotta go forward. Now I have the room to bring the foot on the inside and now I remove his leg. And now I go right to that. Or if he starts putting me back into half guard, I can just quickly, like before he gets a chance, you could do a little windshield wiper yeah. into that movement. So let's see that again. So, so from the half guard, he's got the butterfly hook. So this outside hook, and this happens a lot, and a lot of people don't really know how to deal with this. Yeah. And almost retreat as soon as somebody throws this hook in. Yeah, or they, okay. they may just try to just pull the leg out anyway, and the person follows you, take you off balance, and then the person recovers. Yeah, and this is really dangerous too, especially no gi, because now we're enter entering areas where if I'm able to get this hand to the inside and lift, yep. we're in leg lock territory. Okay, so we can't let somebody get comfortable with their their butterfly. Even when, you know, this isn't ideal because I'm really flattened out, but it, he's still got to deal with this. We can't just let the person go, let the person hold on to this without dealing with it. Yeah, so from here now I'm going to shift my weight forward right here, and I'm going to lift my hips up, making uh, my foot light. So I come here. Now I circle my foot to the inside. Now I just remove his leg. And I come right here, I can go right to mount, or I can windshield wipe right to side control, get a nice quick pass, okay? And a similar thing can always be used, like any butterfly hook, a lot of times, if you just lean and windshield wipe, you can easily get that position. Let's see if people are uh, asking any questions. No, I don't think so, not yet. Not yet, we're not on yet. YouTube. Who's on, is anybody on? If you're on YouTube, comment. Let us know you're here. Yeah, comment, ask some questions. We're gonna be going through um, a couple of techniques, but also we'll uh, go over any situations that you guys are interested in as well. <clears throat> any rolling? Are you rolling on him? I still have, I guess he probably was on for a second, maybe. What something. a legend. Hope you're well, Eddie. I can barely see when I don't have glasses on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And um, in the topic of windshield wipers and getting rid of hooks, we can do similar stuff when I'm standing, okay? Because if I'm here and we're here, a lot of times you end up in a situation where he has butterfly hooks right behind the knees. And now, and he's got his legs on the inside, which means he can get enter into my leg. So I like to always... If he has butterfly hooks, I'm touching his knees, I'm doing like C grips on the top of the knees, and then I shift my weight just like when we freed our leg from um, the standing position in the clothes guard. I'm gonna shift my weight, turning my knee in. Then I circle my leg, and now I'm in like one leg in, one leg out. I can put my hand on the hip, come to the side, and then I can go right to a knee slide pass. Yeah, this is a really good movement that a lot of people don't know either. It, he's actually dropping this knee down onto yeah. my shin. So what happens is my heel ends up pinned to my butt here. And, and, and then I can move without him right. following me. So a lot of people just try to go like this and just try to lift. And then as I do this, he just follows me, stays sticky. And then you're like, I can't, can't get it because I'm, I'm not pushing his heel to his butt. So in order to do that, I turn my knee inward, lift my heel up, circle it around. So it's a nice round movement. Right. And also notice right away, as soon as this comes over and in, he's immediately keeping this out and pinned so that this is a very weak hook. 
yeah. or a weak, very weak like mobility, right? Right now, I can't quite get to Delhiva. I, I can't circle back in. And if I push too far, I could just go to like like a smash pass or a leg weave or okay, something like that. Yeah. Or if he, a lot of times, as soon as I go here, he tries some little trips. Right. Boom. Yeah. Here's my opportunity. Yeah. Pass. I mean, I feel like that's such a huge part of passing too. That that so like the reality is there. He circles in and he presses out. It's knowing, and this is what we talked about a couple times, is being that step ahead. He knows intuitively at this point that as soon as he he goes here. If I do nothing, he, this is just going to be, oh, I'll pass them both by, right? I, and I'm not going to do nothing. So he knows intuitively that as soon as he starts to press, he's ready to switch to the other side because my really one of my only options at this point, unless maybe I can bump him forward onto his hands, is to get this foot down and turn my hips out, right? To start to bring this back in, but he drops right away to the other side, and now he's in a good passing position. So it's just knowing those, you know, knowing that option. As soon as I break, push to one side, person's probably gonna, their, their behavior is probably gonna be to defend it, and to defend it, they're gonna try to shrimp back in. Um, so when you know that, you can be a step ahead and you can already have the next pass in, uh, ready, ready to go. Oh, we have a comment. Oh, Mikey said that's my jam. <laughs> Mikey? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Go. You, you do a little bit of windshield wiper in the legs and, and getting to a proper passing position, especially if they're um, really good with their butterfly hooks, staying really sticky. Yeah, Mikey's really good at, at side to side with the knees, bringing the feet up and over, forcing those positions, and then, you know, switching of the hips once you start coming down a little yeah. bit, change, direction changes. Um, which, you know, like obviously like the theory there is you push one way and then the person turns back into you and you start to go the other way. Obviously the faster that you can do some of that stuff, the harder it is to react. The slower you do it, you know, it, it, obviously as soon as Yanni starts to go to the other side, I'm going to then start to fend that movement. So, you know, the, the reaction, um, the timing, the speed, all that stuff plays a factor. Obviously, you don't want to go so fast that you get sloppy because sloppy will make you loose, which makes it easier to defend. And if maybe you went a little bit slower, a little bit tighter. But if you go too slow, now you lose the advantage of the timing, right? Of that being a step ahead. If I'm a step ahead, but I'm moving like a snail, then I, can, I have more time to react to what he's doing. So it all plays a factor. When you start to drill something, you start to learn something, practice it slow a bunch of times so you get the movement perfect then start to pick up your speed, right? And and your timing, right? So you're gonna mess it up, but you'll start to pick up on your speed and timing, and then you can kind of really, that's when that's when stuff starts to work in, in live training, I feel like, is when yeah. you start to really get that timing down. Obviously the technique has to be there, but I feel like the timing is like, I would say at, at when you're rolling against higher level guys, it's it's almost as important. It's yeah. it's, it's right there, like because you know we all know what's coming, right? Yanni, as soon as I start going for something, he knows what's coming. So I yeah. have to do it with a certain amount of, of efficiency and speed. Otherwise, he's just gonna you know because there's always a defense to every single move. There's a counter to a counter. Is there any way to rewind from the start on Facebook? I'm not sure. I think so, right? Not on live. You have you would have to rewatch it from the oh. yeah. So after the live is done playing, I yeah. think then you can. If watch you want, it. you can go probably on our YouTube channel on the up top's YouTube channel. Yeah, we'll you post could, the whole uh, thing afterwards. Uh, that I know you can definitely rewind on YouTube, and then you can click the live button to bring you back to wherever we are. Oh currently. yeah. So either but way, but we're live now. You don't want to go back in time. Yeah. You want to be with us right now. Be I in know. the moment. Who is that? I can't see. Andy, Andy Ville. Hey guys, Trevor, what's up? We're working some guard passing, no gi. Yeah, so um, similar stuff from here. I'm going to actually take it a step further. So this one, this movement, okay, right now has been made a little bit popular by like uh, Gordon passing in no gi. And what happens is sometimes I come in here, maybe I want to push his knee in. I want to like tuck it in so that I can get to like a three-quarter mount and of course he's gonna he's gonna be resisting 
So now I'm gonna post my hands over his head, or I like to post one hand by his head, one hand under his arm. This way, I'll end up with an underhook when I finish. So I'll come here and shift, and now I bring my heel to my butt, and I do the same movement I did in that half guard pass. Then I just lower it and drop. So this one I like to use. So I'll, in the drill, what I like to do is I start from windshield wipering the legs. So I windshield wiper in, and I come in here, and then I push his leg in. So he's already like getting uncomfortable here. As he comes forward, I post, and then I come up. See how I, what I did with my foot? I put my foot right here. And now I just slide it out, and, I, and you're gonna end up in like a three-quarter mount. Nice tight position to start doing half guard passing. Possibly pass directly to mount. Real nice technique. So I'm coming here. I come to this position and I pull the leg in, then I pose, come up. So my, my weight is on my hands, my feet are light. Then I come up over here and then I drop. I pinch my knees together so it's hard for him to get my knee back into his half guard and then I get a nice tight position on top. Sometimes I'll even just go to right to a knee cut here, like I'll, I'll come here, drop down and then slide my knee across. I think the three quarter mount is probably the best bet, yeah. especially in Nogi where um, the person is more slippery, you're, you're going to find that, uh, that three quarter mount is usually the more solid position. To get yeah, to. if you pinch your knees there, you kind of, you know, I feel like a lot of times a three quarter mount, as long as you keep pressure up by the face and you keep that low position, most people will try to open to to like escape their knee out and then usually you can get your knee off pretty quick. Uh, sometimes people will just lock down and squeeze really tight on it, in which case you do some of the stuff that you're talking about. Trevor, can you post this uh, link into the peer members group? Because I just, I went live on my own page, so I don't know, there's not a link in the peer members group. It would be much appreciated. Yusuf. Xavier, Scott, Leibowitz. What's up, Scott? Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, I use like, so like I use, I use kind of like a strategy from sort of the same situation when you have somebody who's got a variation of butterfly hooks, whether it's low, whether you're, you're low or standing. Um, and then I combine it with, I, I called this leg, leg surfing until Josh Hayden came out with his DVD and called his 50-50, uh, uh, or I don't know, no, uh, four, the 411 system leg surfing. Hmm. Um, so I didn't want to confuse people, so I stopped calling it leg surfing, but I'll show you, explain why. But basically, sort of the same strategy. Um, ultimately, uh, you know, if I can get to that inside position and then to the knee cut, that's where I'm trying to get to. So same deal if I'm working here, working to get into a low passing position on the side here. But I, I have had a reasonable amount of success. I learned um, this part of this system. I kind of came up with some of it for myself, but um, the, base of the basics of the system from uh, Dave Branch um, years ago. And basically, it's sort of like if I'm if this person's doing a good job of really not allowing me to get that leg to the center. Like I, a lot of people, everybody really knows that if I get one leg center, this is an issue, right? I've now split his guard. We talked about this a, a, a number of times, right? This is you know headquarter position, JT Torres knee cut positions, long step guard passing positions. This is an issue for him. Okay, so a lot of people, whether it's playing a good shin to shin. Or just being super active with swimming their legs. Every time I try to come over, he re-swims, and I just can't seem to get this foot to the inside. Um, being comfortable with a passing process from the outside, I think, is important. It's just that now I have to be aware of the danger of this leg shooting through at any given time. Okay, especially with good good leg lockers. All right. So um, what I like to do, I'm actually going to do it from low first, and I'll kind of explain how I do it from the feet. But basically, like if that's the case, I'm going to come in, bring my knees back down to a butterfly or his butterfly position here. And I, I'm always actively 
kind of putting some kind of pinch onto his hooks. I don't kind of relax in this position where, again, if I'm relaxed, that means he can off balance me. If he gets my weight shifted to one side for a second, he might be able to elevate and start to off balance and get into leg attacks or sweeps if he can, if he can control my upper body. Next thing I'm doing is controlling biceps here. Okay, let's actually go back just a little bit. Okay. And this is going to be like, you know, my home, home base position here. Can I get the bicep control? And can I get his knees to his butt um, into, in this butterfly position? I, I feel very comfortable with this position. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to come up, okay? And we're going to look to pin his knees together by using our legs. And I'll show you why I used to call this uh, leg surfing. So I'm going to basically step up, okay? My heel is tight to my butt when I step up here. And my knee is going to come somewhere between the mid thigh to the upper thigh so that I have the ability to push. Anything lower than that, he's going to easily be able to, to, to counter that. And even, even here, if he starts countering it right away, he'll still be able to stop it. But when he does, when he starts to, if he starts to open the knee up as I start to pass it across, that's when I'll go right to the, the knee split um, or the shin, what do you call it? The leg pommel, whatever you want to call it, um, that, that Yanni was going over. So basically, I'm here, I'm controlling. I might have been low to start. I might have been in this middle position here. I look to step up, get this knee right to the center. Okay, and my goal, I'll show it kind of fast motion, but my goal in slow motion is to get his knee past my center line. Once I feel like his knee's past my center line, it's not gonna be very hard to pin both of his knees together. And I'm gonna do that by surfing my legs across. Notice how I still have control of his biceps. Um, I'm doing, I control his biceps for as long as I can. Okay, it's not the end of the world if my hands end up on the mat one way or the other, but obviously it just gives him more tools to work with. Right now he's, he's going to be trying to like get his hands to the inside and I'm actively fighting against that as I do this, but I'm obviously going to do this quick. I'm going to shift my weight just enough up so that I can pop my hips and surf across on his legs. Okay. So when I do this live, right, we came in, we came low right to the biceps and I come forward and like I step up. And now again, here's the danger point theoretically is if I come too far and I open up, can he shoot here and then start to attack? I, I haven't run into too much issue with this since, you know, I, you know, just, just being aware of it as long as I know that I gotta I mean, keep I, it. I feel like your head position is gonna help you. If his head goes too far past, like where, right. I'm, where it's over my head, I can right. possibly get underneath. Yeah, him. I'm pretty much just kind of shifting my weight. My head's coming up, so that I'm I'm just trying to compress a little bit more. And I'll even kind of sometimes use my hand to bring this to center, but normally I don't need to. Just I use the the outside leg. I pull this here. You can already see this is becoming a problem for him. Okay. I pop the hips, I take a big giant step out, and I surf over to the outside. Now my okay. legs are together, I have right. no guard right now. Legs are together, my shin is on top, and I, I always know I did it right if my hip kind of lines up with his hip, okay? I can even be sitting on the hip a little bit, but usually you're going to end off out. I needed to allow this leg to travel out to the outside, okay? If this stayed here, now what happens is I'm off balance, so as soon as he starts to move, I'm going to fall down. Okay, I want to be in that same knee cut style, style position. Okay, um, sometimes I call it like the Spider Man position. All right, um, maintaining pressure here. Now I look to swim. Can I get my underhook? If I can, I go head low. Okay, we're starting to search here. If I have to get this hand out of the way, I will. But ultimately, the head control is what I'm looking for. Knee down, pivot, and then right into a tight side control. What usually happens though, is that the person immediately starts fighting back against you. So I'll back step, replace that hook with my hand, and then come to. Now we're in the, he puts me in the dilemma where I have to either give up my back or give up the pass, you know? Yeah. So I, I've, I've enjoyed this, this, uh, this passing strategy coupled with uh, exactly what Yanni was going over. Was that, was that, uh, you know, bringing that knee to the inside. Um, I don't, you know, I won't fight too hard for one or the other. Was the person really going to get me? Because I feel like one, uh, if if he fights hard against the the me collapsing the legs, the shin into the inside comes becomes very easy. If he's a little bit looser with his legs, where he's circling and pummeling really well, then the collapsing the knees becomes much easier. It's just about timing. So same deal, I'm here, and I'm on my toes as soon as I can be, okay? If I'm on my, my laces, if I'm on the top of my feet, 
Okay, I'm not going to be dynamic and standing up. Yeah, I can feel his weight's not pressuring. So as soon as I get here, my hips are forward, my head is up. I might start low, but I'm going to ultimately come up, take that step. Okay, with this foot, knee up, pop, up, and surf the legs over to the side, keeping my weight down. Try to get to that underhook, okay, around the head. If I had to, I might have fought for this, but usually the person's more focused on my leg, which isn't going to do really all that much if I get control here. Okay, put that pressure, drop that, and hit it. And then... Yeah, it puts a lot of pressure on me. Um, my knees are here, but my upper body... It's torqued. It's yeah. torqued. You end up in a really uh, sucky position. So, one more time in the sixth for the second one. All right, so I'm here, take that step. I go to step and travel. He starts to shrimp back or turn back into me. Okay, and I'm immediately, with this one, I do have to plant my hands as I do this most of the time. But it's okay, because now the underhook's not as important, right? Because we're going towards his back. When I'm going this way, I need that underhook. I won't go, so even if I'm here, and there's like access, don't take it if you don't have that. This is yeah. basic passing, right? If I'm like here and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna, we're gonna scramble. Yeah, I can okay. get up. So if that happens, sometimes this happens when I go for this, like I had to post forward to not fall forward. No big deal, I just know I'm going to the other side. Shift the weight back, cool. and then immediately replace. And then and we end up see, here. See, my knees are still facing this yeah. way. And I'll hold this a long time. And if I got somebody who's got, you know, like kind of scrambly and, you know, you feel like, you know, maybe you're losing them a little bit, I'm not ever hesitant to go back to a leg drive to kind of slow them down and maybe go to one of my pass options here. I have a few different things that I like. Yeah. Um, but I feel like that system uh, correlates really well. Um, Correlates not the word complements the uh, the system that we were just talking about. Randy Prowse, Peachy. <laughs> Where's our YouTube people? Are we no, live no, on no. YouTube right no, now? No, we, we definitely are. Just no one's on YouTube. I don't think. <clears throat> That's all right because uh, people can watch the replay a little bit easier on YouTube. I think you can scrub the timeline pretty good. Um, Let's see, let's see. The other thing I was going to show as well is just another way to enter into the position against someone who's sitting up. So, yeah. okay. so this is very common in no gi. We're here and Andy's now sitting. Okay? So obviously a lot of times it's a good idea to, to push him, put him flat on his back and then start setting up my passes. But sometimes it's not so easy and he's already entering into my leg. Okay? So... It's okay, because right now he's got a butterfly hook on the inside. So what I like to do is I like to stiff arm his shoulder. So as he tries to get close to me, it becomes a little hard for him to move me. And then I'm going to step in really close to him. You see what I just did? I compressed his heel to his butt. So as I do this, a lot of times now I can start lifting his other knee up, and he, he's just round, and he's just going to fall to his back. And now we're in this situation where I can... Start going into my same game where we're using butterfly hooks, forcing the better position. So, obviously, if I can step in in the middle, then I, I can sit him down, I can put him on his back much easier. I can also threaten the guillotine, and then when he backs away from the guillotine, I'm now with my knee in the middle, inside control. We'll go over that one a little more in a second, but we're going to work on when he's got a shin to shin. Because a lot of people have trouble with this scenario. So this is what I like to do. I like to stiff arm, hold, step, and drive. So now from here, even if you were to elevate, I can post. And then I can start releasing my leg. Come at it. A lot of times we'll end up like this where yeah. I'm standing. This is ideal so that I can start shifting my weight. So here, I'm always posting on the shoulder, making it very hard for him to, to get underneath me. Because if I don't, and I just try to walk into him here, he can start elevating, making me post my hands here. Now I got to do back steps and all that kind of stuff. So I like to come in, step in, and walk. With your wipe, come in, pose so I can free my leg. So 
Sometimes you can do kind of like what Andy did right here, and mm -hmm. only now I'm going to probably change to the underhook before I pass. Then the other th option is the guillotine, because if I step in the middle, but then he gets a good strong leg, I can, I have to watch that he doesn't come up for a single. So all I like to do is I push his head to the side as I move, and I move his head this way. As he drives back into me, I wrap his neck up. And then a lot of times I'll just, I'll just start powering through. A lot of times he's just gonna put his back flat on the mat to make me let go of the guillotine. Now, add an arm. So in this one, maybe I'm coming in. Same thing, I like to stiff arm the shoulder as I step in. If he wraps my leg, I'm gonna push his head to the side. Notice the way I moved. I'm, I step this way, the same leg that steps pushes his head across. As his head comes back in, I wrap the neck. I'll come in to threaten the choke. If he starts, if I start losing it, my knee is always all the way through. Um, I'll see that one again. So we're in this scenario. Push. Guillotine. Step in. Or sometimes you can put a lot of pressure on that guillotine too. Maybe you'll submit the person, you know, you can even do like a forward roll and end up in a position where you can do like yeah. Sure. Oh, it's under. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll edit the. Uh, <laughs> I'll edit the name later. Yeah, I forgot to. Uh, it still says match breakdowns on YouTube. That's all right. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Cliff, Cliff's watching on YouTube. Cliff Gallier. Yeah. Hard at work. Hard at work, I Cliff. Like what do we get over here? I like turtles so much for SD. Social test. People are coming at coming at me and Mikey hard right now about uh, social distancing. If it's like the same person over and over again. That's true. I mean, not really leaving the house other than to come here. Yeah, I have <laughs> a I have a good um, one that I've been working on a lot too. Um, from, I'm yeah, so uh, let's go actually like this angle right here. So if you have like a situation here where like maybe the person's hugging around your leg, um, basically what I'll do, and even the shin to shin here, I've used this a lot on shin to shin as well. Um, and basically what I'm doing, so same thing, same concept. I'm always gonna be posting on this shoulder. I don't yeah, let it them. Really makes it hard. I'm yeah. I'm like this instead of like. Really. Yes, it's a it's it's a stiff arm. I mean, you guys, uh, if you grappled at all, even when somebody doesn't know what they're doing, when they stiff arm, it's it. They might as well just be putting a baseball bat in between you and them, right? It's it it's you got to get around it. It's not that easy to just break it. So you have to get around it. So when I stiff arm this here, I mean, I can, I can do it with my arm bent obviously as I come in, but if I make this here first, it forces the person to kind of evaluate where they're at. Like his, he's kind of, Yanni wants to be forward, right? There's no, there's no straight, there's no strain on his core, right? He's using, he's just in a forward position. He's in a dynamic position. He's ready to go. As soon as I do this, now he's kind of in this, like I used to call it no man's land. It's like this halfway position where he's almost got to squeeze his core to keep himself up. Okay. As soon as you squeeze your core super tight in this position, your hips and your legs become less mobile, right? You're kind of like stabilizing. You can't stabilize and be loose at the same time. When you're stabilizing, you're keeping yourself tight. So it gives me that extra second. Like he can adjust his hips. He can fight. He can do a lot of different things to beat it. Like I said, it's not, we don't have a grip to maintain, but even just for a second, it'll it'll give you this the, the the time that you need to work into the next position so what i like to do here shin to shin i gotta watch a little bit more um but i'll still work, use it kind of the same way almost the same idea here i'm going to bring my knee in and what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this opposite hand i'm going to go a palm up grip to the inside of the opposite thigh okay i'm going to bring one two 
okay? So basically I'm here, he, you know, we're coming in, he comes in for a grip and I immediately I post to keep him back for that second and I come in. Now what I wanna do is I wanna basically put him on his back and get to a reverse knee on belly position at the same time. Okay, so it's a little bit of an intricate movement, but it's really not when you think about it. It's almost the reverse of what we did before. All right, so I'm blocking this because what I don't want right now is him to control my, my space. All right, I, I block with the inside of the hand. Okay, I'm gonna palm up to the inside of the knee. I start to shift forward. This is gonna replace my weight for that split second that I need to up and over. Okay, and then I immediately back step this leg as I fall down and I still got a little bit because he's gonna probably try to shrimp right away and I'm keeping him away until I can switch my hand um, for the grip there. Yeah, it's a good one against any single leg, you know, whether yeah. it's shin to shin or not, you know. If, if the person's kind of wrapped around here, I almost have to step up Yeah, right now. It's a I little bit away. harder. I usually actually do teach this where I, when you come here, where I just kind of step away with this leg Lean in that way, and then windshield wipe with the leg around. Yeah, oh, exactly. that's a good one. Yeah, yeah, that's, I saw that a long time ago. I think um, Damian Maya does it that way. And then yeah. in the gi, you would grip the outside. Yes, of the, gi the pants. outside of the gi pants. I, I think I remember that. Yeah. I just know that when I step in, so like a lot when when somebody takes shin to shin on me yeah. here, right? It's like you know, I I kind of almost like lean into them a little bit, all right? Yeah. Lean in here. I might post on top first, but when I go, I like to try to get the palm up grip. I think it's stronger, but I can still do it from here. This just allows me to kind of hold it better as I turn, right? Um, and as I come in, like again, see how now I'm putting him into yeah. that halfway position? It's tough for him to, you know, like when he's forward here, he off balances me and controls the, the, the roll. As soon as I put here, this Not is uncomfortable. Fall he's falling back. It, actually, if he's smart, if, he's, if he reads this position well, he'll probably fall all the way back before I'm able to, right? Because now I'm not going to be able to get up and around. Okay? He'll probably fall all the way up back and try to get that leg back in front. But a lot of people don't. They're, they're adamant about kind of yeah, keeping they, this position. You might find like a common reaction is as he pressures in, I may try really hard to lift him. And when right. I do, I'm kind of giving him what he wants. Right. Back steps. Big fan of those movements. Um, and I feel like a lot of people try to, they try to either just strip the, the hook and go into more of a defensive movement. So it's good if you can have an offensive option off of a theoretically dynamic offensive position that they have, right? Because they gonna, they're gonna feel comfortable when somebody feels comfortable, maybe for good reason, but when somebody feels comfortable because they're in an attack position, maybe they, they, they attack all the time from, then they might sleep on your attack a little bit more than when you put them into a very defensive position, obviously they know they have to defend. So both are good, obviously I would like to put somebody completely defensive, but it's not always that easy. I gotta be able to work around. It's sorta, of, um, years ago actually, this had to do with the gi, but years ago I remember say, uh, asking John Donaher in a class, I was like, man, like how do you deal, how do you pass somebody's guard when you're constantly breaking grips, stripping grips, stripping grips when they're really good gripper, right? They go from one grip to the next and you spend the whole roll just breaking their grips and you never get to advance. And he explained to me basically that you have to, it's a combination of breaking when necessary, but learning how to pass with, when the person has certain grips because you can't, oh, can't break every single grip every time. So yeah. it applies to everything, right? Like I can't stop the person from doing everything all the time, you know, unless I'm significantly better. So I have to be able to implement my game and work around offense sometimes and things like that I find to be, um, have a good amount of success. Yeah, I mean, yesterday we were uh, breaking down um, Bones' matches and we were talking about his grips and I know that's the thing that like when I would train with Bones, he would make a grip and most of the time wouldn't be able, you wouldn't to, be able break. to break it. Yeah. But that doesn't mean you can't still be effective. You can um, go like move around with the person instead of uh, instead of breaking, you know, pass towards their grip so that they have to use their hand to do something yeah. else. Well, and every grip is is a grip on them if used against them, right? So it's now usually a good grip, when somebody makes a good grip, the reason it's a good grip, the reason it's dominant is because of what it's controlling. But th things like wrist grips are particularly interesting 
you know, most of the time I want to be the one with the controlling wrist grip. But if Yanni's controlling my wrist and we're moving this, as long as he's holding onto my wrist, it's theoretically we're connected in that position. So sometimes it's not just a matter of can I swim and get my the more dominant grip. Yes, if you can, if I would like to be doing that. But just like I was talking about right in the beginning, sometimes it's not break the grip and then make the grip, it's can I just use his grip against him. If he's holding my wrist over here and I want it with this hand, I just gotta bring my own wrist to my hand. So he's got one or two options. Either he's either he's strong enough to hold me over here with, with, with his hand, which is probably not, um, or he's got to follow or he's got to let go. So I win all three scenarios, right? So if he lets go, no more grip. If he doesn't let go, I pass and now I've got the grip and well, not all three scenarios. If he's actually that strong to keep my hand in place, then I got to do a few more curls, but, yeah, <laughs> um, but then you, then you focus on maybe, you know, turning the hand and, and, and making the grip weaker mechanically. Um, but, but it's important. It's important to, to be able to work against people's, I see Dwayne's in the chat saying, uh, what a wealth of knowledge. Thank you, Dwayne. Dwayne. Yes. And I think these are good opportunities to like work off with each other and teach with each other. So, you know, save some of these links, you know, watch them later because, um, you know, sometimes when you go back to them, you'll be like, oh, that's right. We went, o we went over that in class, but yeah. I haven't done it. If we have a couple of these online classes, use them to uh, use them as a reference. Yeah. You know, I may even go back to them a year from now, see the way, see what I was teaching, and reminding myself because sometimes when I'm in my own training, I go through waves where I'm all about one technique, and then I forget about one technique, and I go back to it later. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's. Amazing. I think that's something you know, like as you progress in the beginning, everything's new information. So obviously you, you know, you're gonna retain some and and forget others, but it's all new. When you get to the point that you've been training for four years, five years, ten years, fifteen years, you know, like it, you're 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 getting to a point where like you are gonna recycle information, and then each time you learn it, you're that much more experienced, and you're learning it usually with some sort of different twist like some you saw somebody like a lot of times you go back to something that you you, you used to use uh, Yanni's armbar system for example like we went over that when Yanni was a blue belt and I, I was a brand new white belt or maybe Yanni was a purple belt we went over that Kimura system some of those arm bars from that position but compared to how much it's developed and I don't mm -hmm. think you played it for years like you a little yeah. bit here and there and then we came back to it and or he came back to it specifically really developed a lot of things maybe pulled information from th things he had seen mm -hmm. other people do and then we kind of revisited it relearned it in such a more dynamic way and then and more advanced way and that's a lot of that's a lot of what learning is and i think that's why jiu jitsu never gets boring you know yeah. it's it's always fun because you know it's not like oh there's nothing else for me to learn. There's no move. It's me, you know. Like you know all the positions. We, you know, we've been in all these different different submissions. Very, very seldom is there going to be a new submission that you see. I mean, occasionally, but most of the time, the the fundamentals are what works. It's yeah. just the reinvention of fundamentals constantly. How to apply them differently and all those little things that you're like, oh yeah, I used to do the armbar. I stopped doing it because. You know, I was struggling with this, and then now somebody showed me a little fix to that, and now I'm like back on that arm bar. Yeah, I think um, a lot of times it's questions from my students. Yeah. You know, they'll ask because they're struggling at a certain point, and I'm trying to help them. And then every time I give them advice, when I go and roll, I'm always, you know, ingraining that in my own head. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah I mean, I just taught, you know, so and so how to pinch the knees or curl the head or right. secure a specific way and then I, I make sure I do it and then I get a little bit better. I, I find little ways to make things more efficient. Efficiency yeah. is really where the technique comes in, right? Yeah. And I That's actually find it. Yeah, I actually tell students all the time, not usually like brand new students, actually almost never brand new students, but but like if somebody is like blue belt level or higher, I'll, I'll say it at classes, when you aren't sure of how to do something, Yes, we want you to ask 
us because we'll probably have an answer for you. But I always say to try to analyze, like answer the question for yourself. If you were to ask yourself the question, how would you answer it? Because a lot of times you'll figure out what's missing, right? Because if, 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 if I go to Yanni and I say, you know, I keep going for my arm bar and the person, I, I, can't break, I can't get the arm, can't break the grip. Let's just say it's a grip break situation. And then I, you know, I said, well, okay, if somebody asked me, hey, I can't break the grip, what would I tell them? I would probably walk them through an arm bar and say, are you getting stuck here? Are you getting stuck here? Are you getting stuck here? You know, it's like, okay, I'm getting to the grip. Okay, well, what is it about that grip that, that's making them strong? And then I can start to figure out what it is I really need there. Because usually it's simple fixes. Usually it's, you know, it's just a slight different in the way of thinking, oh, you know, they're too strong because I'm not putting enough pressure on the head to make their positioning work, or I'm not keeping control of their hips, you know, something like that. So it's, it's really good to, to kind yeah. of analyze your own technique. Oftentimes you tend to look at things through your point of view, and you got to sometimes look at it through your opponent's point of view. Like, right. Why are they so strong from here? Right. What are they doing? What can I do to make them feel weaker? Mm -hmm. If I'm in the same position... What don't I like what when people don't do? I like? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I, I, I talk about that from mount a lot of times because I think attacking from mount is is particularly difficult when people start to learn how to defend well um you know getting bumped and rolled is easier in mount than like a side mount for instance so uh attacking like a good arm bar learning the s mount and the things like that takes a little bit of time and i find people get really frustrated while they're in mount and i'm like you know, if you're new, you've been mounted a whole bunch of times. So let's think of it like you you have mount right now and you're getting frustrated. There should be no reason that you're getting frustrated, even if you can't submit the person because you have mount, you know. So put yourself back into the position when people mount you. And what is it that you don't like about it? Oh, they're leaning over you and they're putting a lot of weight forward. They got their feet crossed and you can't seem to get your, your hips are pinned. You know, like what is it that they're doing that's making it so miserable? And then do that to, to the other person. And sometimes it's just that. It's like, don't worry about like it perfect, you know, getting that perfect arm bar. Focus on just dominating in that dominant position. You know, and obviously when it's not as dominant of a position, it's harder to do that. But all of those things are, are, are important to think about. Put yourself in that other person's position when you have it every time. You know, try to look at it from both sides when you have the opportunity to. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> Maybe next week we'll focus a little bit on Mal. Yeah, you know? Mal. That's, why, uh, That's really good. We'll have a topic for next week uh, in the gi, no gi, you know. So in gi, um, I can go over some details on the cross collar choke, mm -hmm. which I really like and a lot of people have trouble with. And then a lot of it is similar in gi and no gi, but we'll just review some of it yeah. in the no gi scenarios on Wednesday. Yeah. No, I love mount position. Um, I didn't for a long time because I felt like people were able to get free. But um, but when I, I think it was training with Yanni years ago, so sort of the same thing. Just very simple advice. Just to just about controlling, focusing on on positioning. Um, you should never. I mean, if you have mount position, there's a reason it's worth four points in a tournament. You know, obviously in fighting, it's going to be one of the best positions that you can take. Yeah. Um, it should be, you should be comfortable. You should be comfortable taking mount on somebody. You should want to take mount. Um, you shouldn't feel like, oh, I got to dismount because I can't do anything for mount. Um, I think that's really important for a, a, a complete top control system. Definitely. Um, is that anyone? Elbows to the face. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Trevor said, you and Mount means elbows to the face. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's uh, that's all Brian McLaughlin, Shorty Rock, Sh Sean Santella, you know, like in MMA, Jiu-Jitsu, one of the things I really like that I, I, I'm glad I can sometimes bring to the table is, is, the, um, is the perspective when somebody can strike. You know, I think, you know, as martial artists, I'm not one of these people that's like, oh, it's all about street fighting because it's not. 
I don't think really any martial art is, is, is about that except for maybe Krav Maga, but you know, even them, the, the, like you can't, I've been in street fights and you can't, like no, no one martial art or one technique is, is the right answer to everything. But having, having the perspective of, okay, like, well, what if somebody can punch me in this position? Exactly. You know, what if somebody can elbow me in this position? Or if I'm in a fight, a professional setting, when the other person knows what they're doing, when you get to a position like mount, if you give up mount position, you made a massive mistake because you're on top position, you can punch, you can elbow, you can... So, you know, one of the reasons we look to do a lot of elbows versus punching is because elbows, you can stay low and grind and keep that really tight position. To punch somebody in the face, I mean, which I do as well, but you do, you have to come up, yeah. you know, you have to give that, you have to pull that space away from them and, you know, are they able to shrimp out and get a guard and that kind of stuff. So, you know, um, it's cool. Maybe one day I'll do a little bit of a breakdown, more MMA style, uh, when somebody can strike, more self-defense style. But yeah, know. yeah, that would be good. Even even maybe next week when we work on some position for Mount, maybe yeah, we can we'll, talk about it. We'll maybe do the, the second half of the uh, Nogi Day. Maybe we'll yeah, that'd be cool. We'll work on using strikes and defending strikes, mm -hmm. etc. Yeah, I think <clears> it's good to good to think about for sure. Good to have in the back of your head, even if you're not, you know, like unfortunately you can't. You know, you can roll, you see people do like the open hand, hand striking, but in my opinion, you're either fighting, you know, doing like MMA training or you're rolling. Um, the yeah. kind of in between. A lot, a lot of our students watch MMA even if they don't practice it, yeah, you know, yeah. so, so you see how it so works. When you, when you learn it, when you watch the fights, you tend to like have a better appreciation when you yeah. understand, especially coming from a fighter, you know. Yeah. Well, and, and also like a lot of times you'll see guys like seemingly simple jiu-jitsu options that people aren't doing because they're in an MMA fight versus jiu-jitsu matches yeah. and a lot of times it has to do with you know the ability the person's ability to punch you in the face it does yeah. it does change things it does um, it, I, I would say stuff yeah I would say effective. probably like you know 40 50 percent of the work that we do with Brian um, for MMA jiu-jitsu is just strictly dealing with punching and then dealing with when we can punch them even like even like closed guard if you think about closed guard being um you know generally considered a more dominant position for the person on bottom in jiu-jitsu because they have more options as soon as you add punches now it's just a matter of can the person on top not get submitted because if i can avoid submission and punch you in the face i'm winning right whereas if i can avoid submissions but not punch you in the face I'm still probably losing because I'm still just defending. So it's interesting how that one position can shift a bit just based on the ability to strike. So, you know, but that's kind of, we could go on a tangent about that probably. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Very cool. I think we can start winding it down. Maybe, um, maybe what we'll do real quick is do a quick review of yeah. most of the stuff that we covered today. So those of you guys who um, tuned in a little bit later, you can kind of, um, if you want to get a little more details, just rewind the video, you know, on the replay. Yeah. So we started with um, the closed guard. And, of course, the goal, our, our first goal is to see if we can get two-on-one grip. All right? Then we're going to stand up nice and tall. Stand as tall as you can. Put the hand on, inside the knee. Push straight down. And then step back. Option two, this is the one I was going over with. If, let's just say I do stand up, but I lose this grip, I have to defend the person grabbing. So I shift my weight, circle my leg, and then push through. And then we ended up right here. And then we went over some half guard passing when he uses the butterfly hook. When we're here, I use my own butterfly hook. I shift my weight forward, circle my foot to the inside so that I can pass. Um, I think we did, sit. we also worked yeah. stuff from here where I shifted my weight, circled the leg in and possibly make him go one way or the other. I can come in here, shift my weight forward, use the butterfly hook to get past. Once, once again, we're right here. Um, Andy did his pass where he was coming in. He, oh, I'm sorry, controlling the biceps, coming in and then cut across. 
into passing positions or back step positions where we can take the back, take side control. And I'm trying to think what other techniques. Oh, this sitting up. So if he's sitting up, I can compress his foot, put him flat, and enter into our basic positions. We can come here, step in, the back step passes, one leg in the middle, I can push his head, enter into a guillotine. I'm trying to think any other techniques we covered today. It's mostly just yeah. from my memory. Well, that was, I think, that was a lot of techniques. That was a lot of techniques, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think that was pretty much all of them. Um, yeah. Awesome. Very good. Also, we'll see you guys in the next one. Every day, you know, we're doing the streams at 3 o'clock. Uh, tomorrow, we'll do another maybe match breakdowns. And then Friday, if you're going to tune in um, on, we're going to probably have uh, Lauren here for another yoga session. The last one was really tough, I'll tell you what. Are you doing it? Doing <laughs> yeah, I'm doing it with her. Yeah, in fact, I actually have, I've been using my other phone and doing like a picture in picture so oh, yeah. people can see me make a fool of myself while Lauren so does it. Like, I would do it with you. I'll, be like, I'll make a fool of myself. It's like Lauren does it all good and we're just like. Uh, yeah, and you're just like. Uh, <laughs> All right. Thanks for um, for joining us. We'll see you guys in the next one.